Sponsored by the Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of the Bobby Bone Show. We're so thrilled to bring on an incredible solo artist, guitarist, composer, session musician, Oz Noy. Oz, thanks for joining the show. Thank you for having me. You know, uh, listening to your music and obviously knowing you as a guitarist and, uh, and you've been so popular in all the guitar magazines over the years, but you've got a, a new album out now, Ozone Squeeze 2. Mm. And so how did this album come about? Oh, boy. <laughs> well, the first album came about uh, around 2016. Mm -hmm. I was talking to my manager and I was like, oh, we got to do something with vocals, you know? So I, um, I came across this guy named uh, Ray Thistlethwaite. I found him on YouTube, actually. Um, he's pretty freaky. He plays keyboards and left-hand bass and sing all at the same time and writes great songs. So we connected and uh, then... Um, we connected with with a drummer named Darren Stanley. He's from Atlanta, and we recorded pretty quick. We recorded the first Ozone Squeeze album. It was kind of I collected a couple of you know a couple of um, covers and then a couple of originals of Ray, and we recorded it because we played a couple of times and it was a it it had a sound right away. So I thought like oh this has a thing you know. So we recorded the first album. Um, we did a few little tours, you know, it was really underground, you know, but people started to get into it. You know, I would see like people playing my solos from the album, actually on Spotify, the most listenable stuff out of all my albums is that album actually. So people have been asking, when am I gonna do another album? So what happened was um, after the last tour we did, which was, I think, 217 or 218, we went into a studio here, me and Ray and Darren, and we started to work on a new album. So we recorded a bunch of ideas and stuff, and it took about two years to get to, till we decided to get together again and try to finish it. And then the pandemic hit. <sighs> and that put a stop, that stopped everything for like two and a half years. So this record took me five years to make. So what, what happened during the pandemic is I had the hard drive with the ideas that were recorded. Mm -hmm. I was sitting at home and I started to just kind of go through it and work on it. And right before the pandemic, I did some uh, recording stuff with uh, the Scary Pockets. You know that band? They're a um, YouTube band. So I met this girl named Sarah Nimitz. We did a track together. And I started following her and I really liked her stuff. So I called her during the pandemic. I was like, hey, I got a bunch of tracks here. Do you want to maybe work on it together? So she started to get into the whole thing and write with on what we had. Wow. Then she got in the band. So now it's a quartet. So what happened is once the pandemic started loosening up, we got into the studio, the four of us. It was me, Sarah, Ray, and Darren. And we did a couple of days and we finished recording the album. Well, you know, and there's so many great songs on here, and I think one of my favorites is Squeeze It. Yeah. But it's like, you know, it's it, listening to your music, it's like, you know, being a, a guitar player, certainly not to your level, I don't know whether I want to go home and practice or burn my guitars. You know, it's kind of, about that. You know some, of the, some of the stuff that you're doing, you know, and, and one of the things, you know, that you do so well, Oz, is merging multiple styles of music between rock, jazz, blues, bebop, you put it all together and it, and it just, it's fun music. I try to have fun. You know, when I, gr when I was growing up, I, I grew up in the eighties. So I learned jazz. I'm basically a jazz musician, but I always liked rock. And, and since a really young age, I was doing recordings and playing with pop artists in Israel. So I always liked, like when I was growing up in the eighties, I would play jazz, like traditional jazz with a hollow body, big hollow body guitar. And in the same time, I would shred and play like heavy metal stuff, you know? So over the years, people always told me, oh, you can't do both. You can't, you know, at the time it was like, oh, you have to decide what you want to do. And I never kind of said like, no, I'll just do whatever I like, you know? So and I think that's worked out. Yeah. So some what happened at the end is I pretty much took my I guess it was kind of my jazz knowledge and incorporated with you know more like modern guitar sounds or approaches and stuff like that, which is now nothing special really. Now a lot of people do it, but at the time it was a little kind of like doing that kind of stuff was a little 
off the side. You know what I mean? Well, and I think you help bring that to mainstream a lot also. And, and some of our viewers may not know this, Oz, but I mean, you started playing guitar at only 10 years of age and then started formal instruction like at, at 13 when you were, uh, you know, living back in Israel and everything. You were playing on the top rated TV show yeah. there by the time you were 16, right? No, it was the TV show. I played on some records there and with big artists there from the time I was 16 till I left, which was 24. But when I was 20 or I think it was 20, when I was 20, I played on that TV show. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then you moved to New York in the uh, late 90s, right around 96? Yeah, 96, I moved to New York, yeah. Because I, I know when I was uh, there in New York recently, I, I saw your name uh, on the marquee of the Iridium. Yeah, yeah. Pretty special place. I mean, when you're playing a, a, a gig at the same place where Les Paul used to uh, do his regular gig. Yeah, I, I play there a bunch. Like That's kind of like uh, whenever I tour with my bands, I always do a couple of nights there. We used to play there a lot. Actually, a funny story. It's not a funny story, kind of a sad story, but right um, one of the weeks that I played the Iridium one of, um, a bunch of years ago, we played a couple of nights, and then we played on a Sunday, and Les Paul used to always play on a Monday. So I remember we were doing the show, and then the guys from the Iridium go like, oh, you know, Les is in the hospital. Oh. And then I think a day later, he passed. So, yeah, it was a kind of a bummer, but... I remember it really clearly because we were, we were doing a couple of nights and we finished on a Sunday and they were saying it because usually on a Monday he would play and some, sometimes people will guess with him. I never played with him, but a, a bunch of people I know did. It was pretty fun to watch him play. Well, you know, and you have played with so many incredible people over the year. And we were talking to him before we started, you know, uh, the interview to where you've worked with people such as, you know, Harry Belafonte, you worked with Clay Aiken. Eric Johnson, I mean, you know, Alison Krauss, the list goes on and on to where you're not really held into one style of music, Oz. You know, you work with people from all different genres of music. Yeah, well, what happened is I always been a studio musician since I'm a kid. So I know how to do that, luckily, because it's a good uh, source of uh, income, really. <laughs> <laughs> so I can do the studio stuff and I can play pop, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, not a lot of people know it because people see me, people know me from doing my solo albums. But uh, so I've been lucky in, in that sense. So a lot of the times I haven't done a lot of tours, like pop tours and stuff like that. I've mostly been doing my own stuff. I've done a few, but 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 in terms of playing with artists, I, I get called sometimes to be in, um, you know, house bands for like, um, I don't know, award shows and stuff like that. So I get to play with a lot of those people that you mentioned, which is pretty cool. I played with a, it was I, I, the, the the greatest thing was I played with a, it was with Aerosmith with Joe uh, Joe Perry and um, Stephen Taylor. We, we we played Walk This Way, and I had to play the rhythm guitar part. Was, I was going to bring that up. I you know as a, as a kid growing up, you know, and and being a fan of rock and everything. What was it like to where you're playing with Aerosmith? It was unbelievable. It was the greatest thing ever. <laughs> Well, you know, I've got to bring up too, you know, in your spare time, you know, uh, which you I don't know how you have any Oz, but you're also, you've done instructional videos and you're teaching, you're working with Berkeley. How is all that coming together as you are helping other musicians grow also? Oh, the, the thing about teaching, I always would, I, I, I was never like a form, formal teacher, you know, I always had people come to me kind of to get what I do, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that's been always going on people come to my house or then Skype, you know, like doing it online and stuff. Um, so that's always been going on and it's not that much. It's like there's ups and downs with it, you know, but, um, but recently I was asked to do it, to teach a semester at Berkeley. So that's an actual teaching gig, you know? So, so that's kind of new for me to be, do something every week like that. But it's okay. It's pretty cool. You know, it's like, it's interesting experience for sure. <laughs> well, so do we need to refer to you now as Professor Oz or Dr. Oz? Will that be part of the title now? I hope you won't, but <laughs> associate professor. Yeah. Yeah, but well, what a great experience too for you to share your, uh, your the depth of your musical knowledge with students and players to kind of elevate them. Because, you know, like I told you, listening to your music, it certainly inspires me, 
you know, with all the different styles you're blending and, and with the jazz and, and you reflect your influences so well, you know, such as, you know, Theolonius Monk and a lot of these major, you know, jazz players. Yeah. Well, I, was, I grew up on jazz music, so it's, it's kind of deep in me, you know what I mean? But I always also liked, I love singer songwriters. I love songs. I love the Beatles was my first reason of playing guitar. So that never went away. So, <clears throat> and then I got pretty heavily into blues. So I don't know. I was always kind of open to just music that I like. I never got, you know, some people they think that this is the only way, whatever is, you know, and I, I, I always was open to whatever. So I think that had, that was probably the biggest, uh, reason why you know i kind of collect everything i also don't care much about what people say in, in a sense because um people can tell you oh, this is not going to work or no this you're not going to do you know this is not going to work or you're not going to make money of this or whatever but at the end of the day you just have to do what you like mm -hmm. you know, well, you know and I, I remember too you know uh and just to brag on you a bit which i hope you don't mind but you know in guitar player magazine you've gotten more than a few awards over the years uh, you know, with uh, with best riff and and best new talent and all these different you know accolades. But I remember some of the early images of you, Oz, to where it would show you with like all these guitar pedals around you at the yeah. studio. And I was thinking, it's like, how does he even get back there to play? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I have a kind of a pretty big pedal board, but again, I don't know. I think about it. Maybe at the time, maybe 10 years ago, it was kind of a big deal. But now I see people doing stuff. It doesn't look to me like anything that special. You know, it's, it all kind of got developed from developing my own solo music with my band because I got lucky where I live in New York and I had a, there's a club that I still play in that's called The Bitter End. Mm -hmm. I played there regularly for 17 years every monday so that's how i was was able to develop my music and mm -hmm. when i say develop my music it also means develop you know i develop all my albums that way but it also means developing the sound so i would bring pedals and then i would go like oh i need this pedal for this song so i wanted to add it to the board and i need this pedal for this song i added to the board so it just kind of grew over time you know and then it just became a thing where I do my own music. I need this stuff to create this kind of sonic whatever. Uh... Well, yeah, and, I, and I think what you've accomplished so well, Oz, is that it's not just pedals for the sake of pedals. You use them in such a musical way. I mean, like particularly on this new album, you know, with Ozone 2 to where it's like I can hear the effects, but, you know, you're using them to create soundscapes. Yeah. Well, the, the, the reason I originally started to do this is because when you play a trio, guitar, bass, drums, you have to you have a lot of space and you have to cover a lot of sound. Right. So you actually have space to use those pedals. Where if you play in a big band, it's like it's a little more complex. So uh, that's how I developed it. I I have you know I wanted to kind of add more colors into the music and effects makes a difference. You know. So that was the idea, but. It also works in a situation where in the studio, obviously. So the Ozone Squeeze album, it's I call that band my pop jam band because it's basically pop songs, but we jam, you know, we can really get down and play. So, um, you know, you can add that in a studio situation where you play more produced stuff. Also, you just have to be more careful about it because there's not that much space. There's vocals, there's keyboards, you know. That's pretty much, you know, the concept. Well, and I couldn't help but notice also the uh, the nice uh, Fender Telecaster that you have on your lap. Oh, yeah. It's kind of become your main instrument of late, right? Yeah, I love this guitar. I play it a Strat or a Tele, but this one somehow, I don't know, I use it a lot. I kind of practice on that one. I kind of got connected to it. <laughs> and that's like a new custom shop one, right? Yeah, it's a master build. It's a Jason Smith uh, custom shop. He's a master builder. So, yeah, in a custom shop. So he made me a couple of instruments, and this one's really good. It's beautiful. And well, I got to ask you, Oz, I would be remiss if I didn't. Are there any new effects on your pedal board that you put on recently, particularly for this new album? Um, no, I don't know what new means. Um, I have, um, I think my effects has always been the same, um, like the same as in, for the weird stuff, I always use the Line 6 stuff, the HX stuff. Um, for my usual sound, there's, um, I have this, um, 
exotic pedal that they made for me. It's got my name on it. It's called RCAC Oz. So that one has been my sound forever, really. Um, I have a fuzz that has my name on it by Vamoram. Um, that's been my thing. I have a, I don't know, a tube screamer. It's pretty much the same thing. I, like the Leslie stuff has always been the same. Mm -hmm. um, I use this new, um, uh, there's a company called True, True the Tone, something like that. And they make mm -hmm. a really nice reverb that I use now. That's the only new thing I can think of. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible though. And I want to make sure too, you know, we were talking before we started the interview, I asked where you're going to be doing uh, some master classes around the country also, you know, besides doing your your solo shows and everything and, and with the new album and certainly with your past albums, which are all amazing, uh, Snapdragon, you name it. I mean, you know, the you continue to release great solo albums, but I want to make sure for our viewers, you know, that they know where to go for your website, for your social media, for everything you've got. And also if they want to, you know, get in on a master class with you and, and obviously to come see you live, where should they go, Oz? Um, well, my website is just oznoy.com. Um, social media is the same, Oznoy, Instagram, Facebook. You can see everything I do is on social media, so you can see it. The one thing that is new is I I have a store on my website now. It's just I, I didn't really re for, formally release it yet. It's still already open and what it is is there's instruction there's a there's master class there that i did throughout the pandemic that i'm that are there if you want to and a few books that if you want to buy them because that's um during the pandemic everybody was doing this stuff online so i started to do a master class master class series and i recorded them and they were i thought they were pretty good there was good information there so I edit them in a format where you can kind of actually get them and, you know, with some PDFs and stuff. So that's actually on my website now. That's incredible. Well, I, I tell you what, I hope you, uh, you know, put out the charts and everything for the new album also, you know, Ozone Squeeze too, because it's like, there's so many great songs on here and, and your music, particularly with this new album, I think could lend itself to TV and film and everything else, you know? Yeah. It's just amazing songs, Oz, and and you. You know, like I said, you know, you're an inspiration musically on how you continue to push the envelope. So we look forward to seeing you on tour, hopefully nearby, or coming to one of your master classes. Yeah, I hope so too. Uh, and con congratulations on this new album too. Thank you, thank you. I worked hard on it. it took a long time. <laughs> I'm really it, out. it really shows. Well, Oz Noy, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you very much. Sponsored by The Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of The Bobby Bones Show.